Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship. Nice to have you all here with us today. Uh, It's the first day of May. Um, That means uh, spring's got to be here, you know, sooner or later, right? So so hopefully it will be here sooner rather than later. Um, I opened up the the blinds in the back uh, so that you could see uh, the courtyard uh, this morning. Uh, Lots of flowers blooming. Uh, One of the trees is blooming back there, so it looks really, really nice. Um, So take a peek out the windows on your way out this morning, or uh, you can walk out there if you want. So, um, uh, you know, whatever you like to do there, um, take advantage of the, of the beauty there um, this morning. Um, just a couple announcements here. First of all, uh, we will be communing today at the Lord's table. Um, we're going to commune at the altar rails. Uh, we're using pre-filled glasses. Uh, So please uh, follow the usher's uh, instructions. If you are a guest or a visitor among us, uh, we're glad you're with us. And if you feel so moved to join us at the Lord's table this morning, uh, by all means, come. Um, Immediately following this service uh, here uh, today, uh, this first service, uh, I will be uh, conducting a new members and inquirers class. So if you're looking to become uh, a member of St. Michael, or you just want to learn more about our congregation, what we're about, what we believe, uh, how we minister, um, this class is a, is a good uh, class to come and uh, be a part of. Uh, we're going to start, though, uh, at the back of the sanctuary. So um, after you leave the sanctuary and get your cup of coffee, come back and meet me in the back of the sanctuary. Um, I like to uh, look at the pictures as we go down the hallway uh, to our classroom. So that's why I like to start back there. Plus, it's an easy place for all of you uh, where I can tell you to meet me. So um, join us if if you feel um, that would be helpful. All right. Um, At this point, I'm going to ask Taya Sutherland uh, to come forward. She is the chair of the rummage sale uh, team this year, and she just has a few more announcements about rummage sale, which takes place next Saturday. So... Thank you, Taya. Hi, good morning. So I just, as Pastor said, I wanted to give a few reminders. Our rumor sale is next Saturday from 9 to 3, um, and you're welcome to come shop during that time. Today, following second service, we will be setting up all the tables in the gym and um, unloading the storage unit. So if you're able to come back and help, we'd really appreciate the help. More hands makes the um, work go a lot faster. The last day to drop off donations is Thursday. That gives us enough time on Friday to get everything out and ready um, for Saturday morning. So the last day would be Thursday. We need volunteers all week to help us sort and price the items. Um, The office, uh, the back door, I mean, will be open at 9 a.m. and will be open all day. And I'll be here um, starting about 6 and stay until about 9. So basically 9 to 9. Um, you're welcome to come whenever time is available for you and convenient. Um, so come shop, and um, we hope to see you next Saturday and this week. Thank you. Thank you, Taya. Uh, so next Saturday, just so you know, the time is from 9 to 3, and uh, there is information in the announcements uh, that you were handed uh, on your way in. Uh, this morning. All right, um, let's uh, continue with our worship. Would you please stand if you are able? Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our opening hymn this morning is not found in the green hymnal. Uh, it'll be up on the screen. The song is He Lives. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is 
is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see loving care and though my heart grows weary I never will despair I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast the day of his appearing will come at last he lives he lives Christ Jesus lives today he walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. I rejoice, rejoice, O oh Christian, Lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let's bow our heads and pray. O God, by the humbling of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world, rescuing us from the hopelessness of death. Grant your faithful people a share in the joys that are eternal. This we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and we will continue our worship with the reading of the lessons. Good morning. Good morning. Our first lesson today is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, starting with the 29th verse. Peter proclaimed, fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently, the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he, God, would place one of David's descendants on David's throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Continuing on, verse 37. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brother, 
what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. Here ends our first lesson. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We begin at verse 28. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road? And opened the scriptures to us. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together. And saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way. And how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. This morning, the title of my message is Hearts on Fire. Let me ask you, um, did you... Look for Jesus last week. That was my uh, faith challenge to you uh, earlier in the week, uh, last Sunday. I said, throughout the week, I'd like you to be looking for Jesus. Um, and I had mentioned that one of the reasons that the uh, disciples on the way to Emmaus had not uh, been able uh, to recognize Jesus uh, was because they weren't looking for him. Well, I hope you looked for him, and I hope you found him. Um, this week, we have a continuation uh, of that story, um, and we find uh, that these uh, apostles, when they get to their destination uh, at Emmaus, they decide uh, to invite this stranger that they're walking with uh, in uh, to their fellowship. Uh, it's getting to be evening. They don't want uh, this stranger to, to go on down the road in the, in the, the middle of the night. Uh, there might be robbers, uh, thieves, uh, men out to, to do him no good. So they invite him in. They, they extend to him hospitality. And really what they're doing is, is what I mentioned last week at the end of my, my service there from Matthew 25. Remember when Jesus asked, When did we see you, a stranger, and invite you in? They ask that of Jesus, and of course Jesus says, Well, when you do this to one of the least of these, my brothers or sisters, you do it to me. And uh, so that's what the disciples are doing here, aren't they? They're offering uh, 
some hospitality uh, to uh, this stranger that they're walking with. Uh, they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So they're offering him hospitality. Come in, uh, we'll give you a meal, we'll give you a bed to sleep, and you can be on your way uh, the next morning. Now, um, the scriptures teach us um, that hospitality is a, a very important uh, characteristic of believers. And why is that? Well, the, the book of Hebrews teaches us that uh, we should not forget that some have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Um, this is a reference uh, all the way back to Genesis 19, where Abraham was sitting outside of his tent uh, at the uh, middle of the day. It was hot. Uh, he was probably uh, dozing a little bit. And three strangers show up at his feet. And uh, he immediately gets himself up. Um, he offers them uh, a, a place to sit. Uh, and he scrambles around and pulls together a meal, he and his, his wife Sarah. And they show these men hospitality. Um, and later in the story, what do we learn? We learn that these three men were not three ordinary men like you and me, but they were indeed the Lord himself. Uh, some Christ Christian scholars believe it was Jesus uh, and two angels uh, with him. Um, and so uh, here our story is demonstrating for us that Matthew 25. Uh, when did we see you a stranger and invite you in. Um, these men on the road uh, were indeed uh, walking with Jesus. And it was only when they offered him hospitality uh, that they were prepared then to receive him as their Lord or to see him as their Lord. Well, then uh, we... Uh, see that as, the, as, as Jesus uh, comes to them there in their own home and they're gathered around the table, what is the moment at which they recognize him? Well, it is in the breaking of the bread that they recognize him. That in itself um, should really start all sorts of bells and whistles going off in our head, right? Because why do we gather here today? What is one of the purposes we gather here today? Uh, certainly to hear the word proclaimed uh, uh, from, the, from the scriptures and from the mouth of the preacher, but also to come to the table and to break bread together. And it's in that very act that these two disciples recognize Jesus as Jesus. Up until that point, He's just a stranger. But when they break bread together, their eyes are open and Jesus is made known to them. Martin Luther and the Reformers had a, a, a favorite saying um, that they used quite often. You'll see it sprinkled throughout Luther's writings. Uh, and this saying is, The infinite often comes hidden in the finite. The infinite often comes hidden in the finite. Um, and that's no more clear than in this story here from Luke 24 of Jesus, the infinite, coming to these uh, men in the finite uh, act of breaking bread uh, and fellowshipping um, at the table. And that's what we do today. We'll come forward, we will uh, gather around the table, we will take bread, we will drink wine, and Jesus' promise to us is that he will be made known to us in the breaking of the bread. If you want to know for certain that you've encountered Jesus, then come to Holy Communion, because Jesus promises to be there for each of us. He wants to be known by us. Uh, Paul uh, said this in Acts 17, 27. He said, seek him 
and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. God is not far. He's just hidden. The infinite is hidden. Uh, We talk about creation. We talked about uh, the beauty of our courtyard. Um, you You can't help drive around here today, can you, and not recognize God in our creation. Um, You can't walk through that courtyard and not recognize God's imprint on our creation. Um, But God has promised that he'll be with us in certain places uh, at certain times. And one of those places is Holy Communion. And so we seek him today in the breaking of the bread. So, So Jesus is discovered in our hospitality to strangers, and he's discovered in the breaking of the bread. But this scripture also teaches us one more place where we can be certain to find our Lord. Uh, After Jesus reveals himself and he leaves them, uh, and the scriptures indicate he leaves them rather quickly, um, he we, we, we see this discussion. We, we get to listen in on this discussion between the two disciples. And they say to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the Holy Scriptures to us? You see, Christ was present with them, not just physically, though he was present with them physically. I mean, this Jesus that walked on the road was not a ghost. He had bodily form. Uh, they could reach out. I'm, I'm sure they, they, they shook hands probably when they first met him. Um, the scriptures are very clear with that. This risen Jesus, his spiritual body, does have a physical form. But he wasn't just present with them physically. He, more importantly, was, physic, uh, was present with them spiritually. Okay, now that's really important. Why were their hearts burning within them? Because Jesus and his proclamation, his, his, his word was, you know, by, by, by explaining the scriptures to them about himself, was driving deep into their souls. You know, Jesus said at one point, he says, you know, the word of God... Um, cuts like a two-edged sword it divides bone from marrow what does he mean by that he means that the spirit gets deep inside of you through the proclamation of the gospel the spirit gets deep inside of you as that word is proclaimed in holy scripture and i'll tell you sometimes it can really get a hold of you and it can change your life it can transform your life I'll, I'll be honest with you, um, uh, probably uh, around the middle of February, um, as your pastor, I was kind of running out of gas, okay? But I, I took on this task of, of preaching for six weeks on the story of the prodigal son. You all remember that? You're probably all sick of that story by now, right? But I have to tell you, um, reading that story meditating on that story, praying on that story, preaching on that story to you, just really got deep down inside my soul and really touched me. Um, And I have to say, I felt my heart burning within me. Have you felt that recently? Have you experienced that where, you know, you're, you're reading a scripture and you all of a sudden realize God's talking about me here. God's talking about my life. God's talking about my problem. God's providing for me a solution to my problem. Have have you ever, ever felt that? Have you felt it recently? Has your heart burned within you? If not, here's what I want to encourage you to do. I want you to pick a gospel. I don't care which one. Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. And I want you to read it this week. And yes, you can read a whole gospel in a week, but you don't have to. You can go at your own pace. All right? Pick a gospel, start reading it. But don't go quickly. 
And if you run across things that you don't understand, stop. If God uh, picks your interest in a particular phrase or saying, if it, if it starts to vibrate, if this, this phrase like catches your fancy, then stop. Meditate on that word or phrase or sentence. And spend some time with that scripture and give God the opportunity to get deep inside your soul so that he can start to burn within your heart. And when that happens, I think you will experience the presence of God in your life. Martin Luther had a saying. He said, When the gospel is preached, God is present. Because the gospel is the word of God. Wherever the word of God is proclaimed, wherever it's read, wherever it's expounded upon, uh, wherever um, it's discussed, discovery takes place. And that discovery is God himself. Again, Look what we have here, the the Holy Scriptures, right? Oh, my Bible's gone. Well, pretend I'm holding a Bible here, all right? What do you have? You have a book. You have paper. You have ink on pages. You have words, phrases, sentences. But they come together as stories, as communication from God himself to you. And so in the finite Bible, in those pages, in those words, in those sentences, in the voice of discussion, in the voice of the preacher, in the voice of the the person reading the scripture, that word is finite, but it becomes the infinite word of God because God reveals himself in finite things, in hospitality, in the breaking of the bread and in the proclamation of Holy Scripture. You see, God wants to be found. What did, what did Paul say? Seek, seek Him. Reach out for Him. And perhaps you will find Him. And I would say Paul is being just a, 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 a little uh, less bold than normal because I suggested to you that you, for, for a fact, will find Him because God wants to be found and so you know the the fact that we don't have God in our life sometimes I think isn't so much God's fault as much as it is our fault seek him and you will find him I'm going to close with this verse from Jeremiah 29 13 it's at the bottom of your sermon notes Jeremiah is very emphatic, isn't he? You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Uh, Jeremiah, the prophet, has received this word from God and he's sharing it with us. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Folks, there's no mystery here. right? There's no, uh, there's no maybe here, right? This is an emphatic promise from God. Seek him and you will find him. Thanks be to Jesus. Amen. Will you join me uh, in confessing our faith uh, using the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare uh, to go to the Lord in prayer, um, let me first ask, are there any joys or victories you would like to share with the congregation today? Yes, Denise. All right, Jeff Paroli is 60 years old. Is it, it was yesterday, right, or Friday? Thursday. All right, on Thursday, Jeff was, was 60 years old. So happy birthday, Jeff. Other joys this morning. Yes. Oh, nice. Okay, very nice. Thank you, Jean. Jean's granddaughter got to, to uh, uh, dance with what was called ballet on wheels. Wheelchairs. Oh. Okay, awesome. And that was at the Valentine. Yeah, awesome. I had another one here, I thought. Yes. Okay. And is that Jack sitting next to you? Welcome, Jack, and happy birthday. All right. Any other joys this morning? All right. Um, additions to our prayer list. Um, we uh, should pray for Don Bliss. It's a, um, a friend of Judy Smith, but it says not Pastor Judy Smith. So there's another Judy Smith that, that uh, also tunes into our, our stream. So uh, thank you, Judy. We will pray for Don. Um, he is uh, awaiting uh, an oncology recommendation to deal with some cancer. Anyone else we should pray for this morning? Yes, Jan. All right, we'll pray for Barb. Starts chemo. I saw another one. Yes, Jean. Friends and family of Kenny Gronikowski. Okay, passed away this week. We'll pray for his family and friends. Others. Yes. Okay, so we'll pray for Geraldine Manor, De declining health. Okay, anyone else? Just an update on Marty Vernier. Uh, he did go home from rehab this week, so he's at his house now, um, still awaiting um, uh, information on when he will begin his uh, chemotherapy and radiation. Um, so keep Marty and uh, Luetta in your prayers, if you would, please. Anyone else? Also, uh, Carol Randall is still in the hospital. Um, at least last I heard, she was still in the hospital. So um, they were thinking about her getting to go home maybe this weekend. So I have not heard if that's the case or not. Uh, but continue to keep Carol in your prayers as well. Anyone else? All right, let's bow our heads and pray. Father in heaven, gracious Lord, we continue our Easter season. And what a joy it is uh, to bask in the glow of the resurrection, of the empty tomb. Uh, what a joyous time it was for those original disciples to, to have contact with their Lord after those horrendous three days when they thought he had died on the cross which he did, uh, and had been buried in the, in the grave, uh, never to rise again, they thought. Uh, and then that glorious Easter morning, the tomb was empty. Um, and for 40 days, according to Holy Scripture, he lived and moved among them, uh, coming and going, uh, sharing his life uh, with all of his disciples. And then he gave the Holy Spirit that that Holy Spirit might move among all of his disciples generation after generation so that we too can bask in that resurrection power, in that resurrection life. And so, Lord, we, we thank you for that joy. What these last three weeks, uh, uh, hearing the gospel uh, proclaimed, that, that Easter gospel, uh, what a joy it has been for us. And we thank you for this life 
that you give us uh, in and through Jesus our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, it's so easy for us to become distracted uh, in this life. Um, We live such busy lives often, and there are so many shiny things to distract our gaze, to distract our attention from you. Um, And so sometimes, Lord, we we fail to seek you. And for those times, Lord, we, we ask for your forgiveness. And so we pray now you will inspire us anew through this proclamation of the gospel this morning um, to seek you, uh, to seek you every day, to seek you every minute of every day. Um, As I often tell uh, people in the hospital that I'm visiting, um, you, Lord Jesus, are only a prayer away. Um, Help us to remember that. Uh, Lord, that you desire us to reach out to you, to find you, um, to uh, relate to you, to live in relationship with you. Uh, Help us, Lord, to take advantage of these tools that you've given us. Um, You've taught us how to live. You've taught us a a godly way to live that evokes your presence. You've taught us to to gather around the word, the word proclaimed, uh, the word in Holy Scripture, um, to, to live in that Scripture, um, to bask um, in your communication with us, um, that we might know that you are near. And you've asked us to gather around the table um, and to do this in remembrance of you, Lord Jesus, because when we do it, you become known to us. You're, you, you, it's like the curtain is pulled back, that, that curtain on the divine is pulled back and we see you when we eat bread and drink wine and, um, and hear you um, tell us that you died for us and that your blood was shed for us. So Lord, help us to seek you. Help us to find you um, today in the breaking of the bread when we come forward. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those that we lift up here this morning uh, in, in uh, our prayer request. We pray for Don um, as he undergoes cancer treatment. We pray for Barb as she undergoes chemotherapy. We pray for Geraldine as she declines here in the, in the twilight of her life. Um, we continue to pray for, for Marty Bernier as he undergoes cancer treatment, um, recovers from his back surgery. We pray for Carol Randall, as she continues to uh, battle with blood clots. Uh, We pray for the family and friends of of Kenny Gronikowski, uh, who passed away this week. We pray for your comfort and consolation to be upon them. We pray for all on our prayer list, Lord, both our our short-term and our long-term list. And we pray for those that we now lift up in the silence of our hearts. Lord, bring your healing power down upon each of these individuals for whom we pray, uh, as is best for them in accordance with your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, inspire us. Inspire us to go forth from this place renewed, uh, encouraged, uh, and prepared, equipped uh, to be your witnesses Uh, to be your people, to be your disciples uh, as we go forth into the world. Lord, make us evangelists. Um, Help us to share the good news uh, with those who need it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your grace and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, Let us now receive our tithes and offerings.
with the prayers we offer. Grace our table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus. For he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, in mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And so we give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through this one Lord Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in this Holy Supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then our Lord Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of your sin. As often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. Pray with me the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Helpers, would you come forward, please?
No, Dave, let's go ahead and do start here. Christ given for you.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy, you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning uh, is not in the green book, uh, but it will be on the screen. And the song is Because He Lives. I know he 
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.